This video is about the Behringer 1033 Dual Envelope Generator, which is part of the ARP 2500 series. This module is similar to the 1003 Dual Envelope Generator, which shares the same layout except for the gate delay, which is only available in the 1033. So if you want the full range of features, go with the 1033 instead of the 1003. Actually, reviewing this module felt unnecessary, because its basic functionality is probably well known. On the other hand, envelopes are so important components in synthesizers, no matter if subtractive or FM modular or not, that there is just no way around them. And at a closer look, the 1033 has some very unique and interesting features that set it apart from a simple envelope generator. Before we look at the 1033 module in detail, let's see what an envelope is and which different forms exist. Envelopes are essentially control voltages, typically used to modulate filter cutoff frequencies or amplifier gains. The envelope that we see here is probably the most common and often nicknamed ADSR, which is an abbreviation of its four phases, attack, decay, sustain and release. The envelope starts with its attack phase when we apply a gate or trigger signal to it. The slope of the attack phase is controlled by the attack time control and with shorter attack times the slope becomes steeper. In the extreme case, with zero attack time, the envelope immediately jumps to its peak value. After the envelope has reached its peak, it starts to decay until it reaches its sustain level. The slope of this decay is determined by the decay time control and again the slope becomes steeper with shorter decay time settings. The sustain level can be adjusted continuously between 0 and 100% and the envelope rests at this sustain level until we release the gate. With gate release the envelope decays back to 0 and the release time control determines the slope of this final decay. When we release the gate earlier, for example already during the attack phase, the envelope typically jumps to the decay phase directly and starts to decay back to zero again. But this depends a bit on the specific design. Some envelopes run through all phases even when the gate is released earlier. The decay and release phases are sometimes also called initial and final decay, for example on the ARP 2500. More complex envelopes may also have a gate delay, so that the envelope starts delayed after the gate becomes active. These envelopes are then called DADSR, and we find such an envelope in the 1033 module. Then there are also envelopes with an additional hold circuit, we find this for example in the MS20, and this hold circuit extends the gate for a certain amount of time after it is released. And we would call this a DAHDSR envelope. Then we also have simpler envelopes like the ADS one, which has a combined control for the decay and the release time, which we find in the Model D for example. Even simpler is the AR envelope, which has a fixed sustain level of 100%, so there is no need for a decay time and a sustain level control. Similar to that is the AD envelope, which has a fixed sustain level of 0% and therefore there is no release time control and again also no sustain level control. There will be more envelope types out there, especially in the FM world, but let's close this list here for now. Let's now switch to the 1033 module. As we can imagine from the layout and also from its name, this module features two independent envelopes which have the same functionality. These are the envelope controls for delay, attack, decay, which is initial decay here, sustain and release, which is called final decay here. And these little pictograms here help to identify which part of the envelope is affected by these controls except for the delay. Both envelopes have a manual gate button and when we push this we hear and see in the scope that the envelope now runs through its phases. And in my simple setup here it modulates a filter cut of frequency. The envelope of the 1033 module is exponential which means that the slopes flatten a bit when they reach their end points. Exponential envelopes are a bit more handy to modulate filter cutoffs or amplifier gains as they often yield a more pleasing result. However, also non-exponential envelopes exist and these would have perfectly linear slopes. 
let's just try a few different settings. The red LEDs here indicate when the gate of the respective envelope is active. These are the outputs of the two envelopes. Both feature a normal output which generates voltages between 0 and 5 volt at its peak value and an inverted output that flips the envelope horizontally. So it consequently generates voltages between 0 and minus 5. Then we have this external gate input, and this is a bit curious, it acts on both envelopes, so we have no chance to control them independently with an external gate signal. I believe that this was different with the original module, and it really doesn't make any sense here. I can only explain this by assuming that Beringer faced some space problems, as they had to shrink the original modules into the Eurorack format, and I guess they wanted to stick to the 16 HP of the other ARP2500 modules. We can now see the gate signal in the scope as well, it's the lower signal here. And we see that we can also release the gate earlier during the envelope so that it immediately jumps to the final decay phase. The red LEDs again indicate when the gate is active, now consequently simultaneously for both envelopes. This trigger input here works together with the selector and is only relevant when we select the multiple mode. In multiple mode, the behavior of this module drastically changes. When the gate becomes active, the envelope doesn't rise to its peak value, but only to its sustain level. The slope of this rise is not determined by the attack time anymore, but by the initial decay time, which was the same with the original module. When we release the gate, the envelope falls back to zero with the slope that we set with the final decay time, aka release time control. Now with the gate active and in the scope we now see the trigger input instead of the gate. When we apply a trigger, the envelope starts from the initial sustain level, goes through the attack and decay phases back to the sustain level. interesting now is the gate delay, since it now acts on the trigger and no longer on the gate. So the envelope rises to its sustain level at the same time the gate becomes active. The trigger input now is delayed. And when we apply a second trigger during the attack or the decay, the envelope stops where it is and starts again from there after the delay time is over. And with gate release, the envelope drops back to zero and the trigger input has no more effect. This whole behavior seems to be exactly the one of the original module, at least as far as I can judge from the original manuals. The overall quality of the module is good, and the spacing is very nice, so that it is easy to operate. I personally don't like these pictograms here, and these very small letters, which only tell us that this is the left side and this is the right side of this module, 
in my eyes some bigger DA DSR letters would have been better, especially when the lighting is not perfect. But again, this is like it was with the original module. One true downside of the Beringer recreation is the missing gate and trigger input for the second envelope, so that these are not really independent envelopes except for when we use the manual gate button. Let's listen to some quick impressions with this envelope and some other gear from the UP2500 series. The 1033 module is perhaps not the most interesting one, but an essential tool and shouldn't be missing in any ARP 2500 setup. 
Thanks for watching and stay tuned.